They said, come on. What do you like to know? I will tell you. That's how he shared his secret about Sodom and Gomorrah with Abraham. He said, no, is there anything I shall hide from my friend Abraham? Abraham was saying, okay, come on Abraham, come on, let's take a walk. So as they were walking, they could see Sodom and Gomorrah in the distance. And they said, you know, this place is going to be destroyed. Are you sure? Why Lord? Why Lord? That's what I do, you know. Say, why Lord? Why? But, you know, those people, they are very, very wicked, very bad. Lord, Lord. By now, you know, they're putting arms in arms, so holding hands together. So Abel said, Lord, why? It's like John lying on the bosom of the Lord Jesus. He said, Lord, why? You cannot do that. You cannot do that. He went on pleading, you, you shouldn't do that. No, Abraham, why should, I should do that. I should do that. You know, when I was younger, about 12 years old, I was so fascinated about astronomy. I wanted to become an astronaut. So I went to the library. I got a book about NASA. And I looked at all the qualifications to become an astronaut. So I decided I'm going to become an engineer, study engineering, and become an astronaut. But you know, when you're small, your desires always change. Right? I'm sure you've gone through that phase. Haven't you? If you did not, something's wrong with you. <laughs> so one moment was astronaut, one moment was this, one moment was that. Finally, I wanted to become a neurosurgeon. That was my last ambition that didn't come to pass. <laughs> anyway, so I was always fascinated by astronomy. Even when I didn't become an astronaut, I'm still fascinated by astronomy till today. So, whenever I get a chance, I would read books about astronomy, about the stars, the galaxies and all that. One day, the Lord asked me, would you like to see how Saturn, the planet, looks like? You know, two things went on in my mind. Okay, to see Saturn, I must be an astronaut. I must be under NASA program. <laughs> I don't qualify all that. How is it possible, Lord? The Lord said, come. The next moment, Together with the Lord Jesus, I was standing beside the planet Saturn in the spirit. This was way before any of the spacecraft or telescopes took pictures of Saturn. This was way before. And I stood before the rings of Saturn and I saw to my great shock, they were not rings. You would imagine they were rings. I saw rocks. I said, Lord, what is this? I thought they were just rings, like a saucer, but they are rocks all the way. And the Lord gave me a scientific explanation about these rocks and then the black hole. I was always fascinated by black holes. So what is this black hole? What does it do? How is it that it is sucking light? Once on a trip in Tibet, one morning I was waiting on the Lord, and the Lord told me, you know, you've been always been fascinated by black holes. Would you like to see one? If you ask a little boy, would you like a candy? <laughs> Who would say, no, I don't want a candy? <laughs> right? I say, yes, Lord. I say, come. So we're standing. Now, wh what I'm sharing with you is impossible in the flesh. Impossible. NASA could not even send a rocket or a spacecraft near to the age of a black hole because the black hole will suck the spacecraft. So we stood at the edge of the black hole looking down and the Lord gave me a scientific explanation about the black hole and then a spiritual application about the black hole. Why is it there? What does it signify? What does it represent? And I looked down for miles and miles and miles. It's like Forever, light was bent inwards. It just goes down. From the surface, you can't see the light. But inside, you can see the light like it's flowing down, you know, like a waterfall. It goes down for miles and miles, like a bottomless pit, all the way down. 
And the Lord told me, this is what happens, or this is what happened to Lucifer. In the beginning, light was coming out from him. And when he fell, the light bent inwards. And it's now all inside him. And nothing escapes. That's why he couldn't repent anymore. He couldn't. The light bent inside. And it's gone forever. See, God reveals these mysteries to you. The mysteries of the universe. Secrets of the universe. There is a vast, vast territory to explore. No, like what John Picard says. We go where no one has ever gone before. You don't know John Picard? Oh, you all are holy saints. <laughs> You're not a tracky person? Okay, that's a quote from Star Trek. Anyway, there are so many mysteries. But God reveals these things to his servants. However, they do not add an iota to our salvation. They don't. The script Bible that we have is all sufficient for our salvation. Amen. There's no question about it. This is all sufficient. The others, you know, are just like dessert. A meal is not complete without a dessert, right? A cake or a chocolate or an ice cream. They'll come tempting you, you know. You know, I stopped eating ice cream. So when I'm traveling the plane, the stewardess, they'll come. Say, what would you like to have for dessert? They'll have a mouse, a cheese with bread and an ice cream. I said, no, I, I, I said, nothing. I don't like anything. What about an ice cream? He said, no, it's very fattening. He said, look at my stomach. He said, no, one bit of ice cream will not do any harm. <laughs> That's how they tempt you. I, I, then I then said, really? You mean one little cup of ice cream will not add another pound to me? No. <laughs> and you eat up, end up eating an ice cream. And then you soon realize that the needle shows differently. <laughs> so in the same way, those are desserts. God will come and share with you, which will just help us to understand many things. You know, that will help us to understand some things that are taking place behind the scene. When you understand what takes place behind the scene, we can work better. Amen. Amen. So, let's all stand up for a word of prayer. Please send, spend some time in prayer tomorrow before you come because there is a responsibility that God wants to give to His people concerning this nation. So prepare your heart, prepare your mind, so that you can receive what God wants to share and a plan, so that you can know what you should do with the Word. Amen? Amen. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy, Lord. We now ask you to give us an understanding. Father, I pray, lay your blessing hands now upon each and every one of your dear children who are standing here, Lord. As they will leave this place, and go back to their various homes, I pray that you will open the eyes of their understanding. Give them an understanding heart. Give them a listening ear that they will know what the Holy One is speaking to them. Lord, I pray, as they will rest their bodies for the night, 
when deep sleep falls upon them, open their spirits and speak to them through visions and dreams. And when they get up in the morning, let your word speak to them, Lord. Lord, I pray that all the pastors and the ministers who are gathered here seek your face concerning the destiny of this great nation. You have brought them here, Lord, so many of your servants, to hear what you will speak for their nation. I pray as they seek you tonight and tomorrow, as a shepherd that will tenderly lead his sheep, I pray, Lord, that you will guide their hearts. Give them understanding. We read in your word, Lord, where you spoke with a heavy heart. You said, my shepherds, they are blind and they are deaf. They would not see, they would not listen. I pray this not be so among the ministers who are gathered here, Lord that they will have eyes to see and ears to hear. I pray that your angels will visit the ministers who are here, Lord. And your angels will speak to them through dreams, just like how the angel Gabriel spoke to Joseph in a dream about Mary's conception and also about Herod's threat. I pray, Lord, you will speak to them. Lord Jesus, there are many people here, intercessors, who have been caring burden for this nation like a woman would carry a baby in her womb they've been carrying Lord this burden like a woman in labor I pray as the baby in Elizabeth's womb jumped with joy when it hurt the greetings of Mary. Likewise, the burden that they have been carrying in their womb will leap with understanding and with direction for the next step when they will hear what you will speak concerning this nation, Lord. I see a vision right now what God is showing me is just like a road construction that takes place. They'll bring those kind of equipment that will drill like hammer into the road and break up the road, fellow it up, tear apart the outer layer so that they can lay another new road. The enemy is breaking up the foundation of this land, of this country, similarly like that, so that he can put his doctrines over this nation. It is taking place in two areas, one in the land, in this nation, and the other in the church breaking up like road construction workers will break up the road 
dig it deep and tear apart what has been laid. So the enemy has sent out his agents, planted all over, to tear up what has been laid, so that another new layer of falsehood, false promises, false pledges, false doctrines, false teachings can be led over. Be careful. Holy Father, we pray I feel a burden from the Lord come upon me and this is the word if only my people will understand what is happening and if only they will unite their hearts and bend their knees and pray won't they be spared from the calamities that will come? If only they will give their ears to understanding, won't I open their ears and speak to them instructions concerning how to build my church? but they will not lest I heal their land for swiftly as an eagle flies so will judgments and destruction swiftly come upon this land I see many angels Angels of destructions appointed in many places of this nation. Especially, I see a mighty one. I saw this angel last month at the Los Angeles airport. And I'm seeing him again, this mighty one. He seemed to be the angel of destruction, the chief that will oversee many others under him to cause destruction to many places in this land. Prepare your hearts. Prepare your hearts. Everything can be averted or minimized if the people of God bent their knees, humble themselves and seek the face of God. But most of the times we are seeking our own faces, our own wants, more than seeking the face of God. I see another wonderful vision right now. You may just gently sit on your chairs with eyes closed head bowed and just listen with all your heart. I see my soul up in heaven together with the Lord Jesus and we are seated at a conference table 
and the Lord is speaking to me about the many destructions that are going to come upon this nation. And I am pleading with him, Lord, spare this nation. And the Lord is putting forth his reasonings concerning the many, many sins, disobedience, abominations done in his name, all the pretense, falsehood, deceptions done by his people, done by his servants, all in his name. There's so much of filth and abomination that I see in this nation, more so in my temples. And it loads my soul and my eyes from looking upon them. I see now the Lord Jesus just turning his face to one side, not willing to see. When Solomon dedicated the temple, the Lord told him, in this place, I'll put my eyes there. And whoever comes there, I will see them and will hear their prayer. But now, the Lord is just turning his face away from looking at his temples. Again he's saying, Son, so much of abomination is there. So much of abomination. My spirit does not even visit them. They think I am there. But it's not my spirit. It's not my presence. But the spirit and the presence of the enemy that deceives them into thinking that it is my presence. How can I abide in the presence of the evil? At this moment, I am made to understand a command given to Moses during the time in the wilderness. The Lord told Moses, that when people go to excrete, they should dig the hole in the ground and excrete and then cover the hole because God is walking in their land and he should not walk upon filth. And this is the thing that is made me to understand. If that is so in the Old Testament, it is so now too that His presence cannot walk in our midst because of the filth. So much of falsehood is spoken from their pulpits. So much of lies. So much of wrong teachings. All in my name. Their hearts are only after money, filthy lucre, to fatten themselves with gold and silver, neglecting the poor, the widows and the orphans. My church lies like a ruined building. I hear myself asking the Lord, is there any hope, Lord?
With that question, the vision ends. Is there any hope, Lord? There's no answer. But if the people of God here I see the Holy Spirit standing here before me and he's saying if the people pray then I'm asking him but there are so many prayer gatherings so many people are praying the question is asked me how do they pray what do they pray? Look at what the Word of God says. If my people who are called by my name, number one, shall humble themselves, number two, seek my face, number three, repent from their wicked ways, number four, then pray. The first three are missing. They're not humbling themselves. They're just gathering together. They're not seeking my face. They're just simply praying. And most often at times, it is not praying with all their hearts, with all their minds with all their souls. I am seeing a vision now of large gatherings, people for prayer. Many of them, even while the prayers are going on, taking out their cell phones, and they're checking their mails, they're sending out text messages, and they're just fiddling with their phones, thinking about something else, Bodies are gathered, but not hearts and minds. They are not gathered together in unity. That is why salvation is not coming forth. Where else? Nineveh was spared from destruction because the king put away his royal robes, put away everything that pertains to the office of a king, was adorned with sackcloth that is very, very uncomfortable. Instead of sitting on a throne, he sat on ashes, on the ground, repenting before God, which means he put away all his daily activities, phones, telephones, cell phones, computers, everything out. And he sat down before God. A heathen king who does not know God, but he just feared the God of Jonah. from the highest person in the land to the lowest newborn sucking babies. Everyone fasted, prayed, sought the face of God. That is the picture of a heathen people and the other picture of Christians are fiddling with phones, fiddling with messages, fiddling with mails, texting, all takes place in the house of God. Only our mouth proclaims God. Our hearts are far away from Him.
That is the reason why I now see the Lord Jesus in heaven like a king and a judge. He's showing me instead of stretching out my scepter for mercy, like how King Ahasuerus stretched out the scepter towards Esther for mercy, I have to bang down that mallet of a judge for judgment. The Lord has two instruments in his hands. One, a scepter of righteousness that he will stretch out to those who come to him in humility. And the other is that hammer that you find in the judge's hand that he will bring it down to pronounce judgment. A short time is appointed for this land. A short time. Can he find truly praying people in this land? Can God truly find praying people? The scripture says, God looks for one person to stand in the gap. One person is all it takes. Many times I have asked the Lord Jesus this question. Lord, you said if one person stands in the gap, you will spare the land. There are more than one people in many lands praying. For many, for a long, long time I have asked this question. Why is it that you are not hearing? Right now, I am given to understand. Who is that one man that God will listen to? A man like Moses. A man like Abraham. A man like Jeremiah. A man like Samuel. A man like Daniel. What does these men have in common? One thing. They stood before God. They stood in His presence. They walked before Him. They walked with Him. And they were His friends. They knew the heart of God. They knew how to take hold of God. Not just mere praying. Taking hold of God Himself. And pleading with Him. Like how the saints have done. If there be such, won't I be entreated by them as I was when I was entreated by Samuel? Please ponder in your hearts, my dear brothers and sisters, these things. Again, the Holy Spirit is making me to understand. Judgments are sure. They will definitely come because this nation has been appointed for that. But if God's people pray, they can be mitigated, spared, not totally, by, but effects minimized. Pray for the remnant. 
pray for the remnant that they will be wise and understanding that they will pay heed to the voice of the holy spirit to flee from destruction and from wrath when they are told to flee pray that the remnant will be wise at heart pray for your children that they will grow up in righteousness for the enemy seeks to inject unrighteousness into their minds i see many angels appointed over many of the remnant churches those churches who are god fearing those churches who call upon god with a pure heart those churches that have totally dedicated themselves to live out for god no matter what they will be protected just like how lot and his family were spared and protected from destruction and the holy spirit signifies to me god will do this because he is answering the prayers of your forefathers who pledge this land unto god but you have made it into a den of thieves so arise and put on godliness put on a wakefulness that you may hear the voice of your bridegroom say come up hither thank you holy father let your woman learn to pray and give birth to the next generation let your woman learn how to travail in intercession that your womb may give birth to a generation of warriors a generation of prophets and a generation of martyrs the last days prophetic company pray for your sons and your daughters pray for your young men and your young women that they will keep themselves unspotted from the filth and the dust of this world pray that your young people will keep their virginity of spirit and flesh that they will stand righteous before their god and unspotted by the flesh that they may become sharp crushing equipment weapons in the hands of the almighty god i see a huge army of angels
warrior angels standing all around these young people to train them to be warriors for the last day's army of God. Lord Jesus, I pray for all these saints who are gathered here, Lord. They have come from far and near, Lord, to hear you. Lord, your remnant is here. You can count on them, Lord. If others have forsaken you, here are they, Lord, your remnant, who have paid a price to come from so far away places, Lord. From different nations they have gathered here. Because they want to hear you, Lord. They want to know what you are speaking. So that they can take this message to their people. And prepare an ark for salvation, Lord. I pray, O great Holy One, that you will speak to each one of them affectionately, Lord. You have brought them away from their normal routine of life so that you can speak tenderly to them. Words of love, words of comfort, words of edification, words of exhortation and build them up, Lord. Give them your plans. Give them your strategies. Lord, I pray, even when this nation is being attacked by foreign military forces, I pray, you will protect these dear ones from all dangers. Protect this and their churches, Lord. And everyone under their care from the evil one. Hide them, Lord, under the shadow of your wings. As we read in 1 Kings chapter 18, when Obadiah told Elijah that he had hidden the prophets by hundreds in different caves. Likewise, Lord, protect them. Hide them, Lord. Hide them from the evil ones. You know, Lord, how to protect your own because when the life, when your life as a baby was in danger, Your earthly parents were warned to take the mother and the child. You sent Gabriel, Lord, to warn Joseph in a dream. Take the mother and the child to Egypt. For they are coming who seek the life of the child. At the nick of the time, you send a warning asking Joseph to flee from the danger, flee from the wrath to come, kept safely hidden. Even today, Lord, you have marked out places on this earth, places of hiding and refuge for the Jewish people and also for your people. And you will certainly protect them from those evil 
that is coming. And I pray, Lord, that these who are here, they will find favor in your eyes. They will find grace in your eyes. They and their household and every person in their church will be spared, will be protected. Lord, let none of them or their church members be found like Lord's wife. whose heart will be upon the things of this world, whose heart will be upon the cares of this world, whose heart will be upon the lusts of this world, whose heart will be upon the lusts of the eyes of this world, whose heart will be upon the pride of life of this world. No, Lord, let their hearts be sincere and God-fearing, seeking after you. Shall we all kneel down, please? The Holy Spirit is signifying to me not to close this meeting until you now kneel down and you open your heart and you talk to God for a moment now based on what you have just heard. You talk to God now. And you make a commitment on which side you want to stand. You and your household. You open your heart and you talk to God now. When you are done, just gently sit on your chest. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. I see the Lord Jesus walking in our midst right now. He is coming near you, listening to your prayers, seeing your tears that rolls down your eyes. So go ahead, let the tears roll. Open your heart and talk to him now. Make yourselves known to God. Are you willing to totally surrender all? Say to the Lord, you declare it to Him. Lay down all all that is yours and make a total consecration and a total surrender unto the Lord your God. Surrender your, you and your household. Household includes your immediate family, your close, your own family and the household of the house of God, your church. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. I see the Lord Jesus Christ holding a scroll in his hand. And he's coming to give to some people. This white pastor who's sitting behind Pastor Fondong. My brother, you. I see the Lord Jesus stretching a scroll to you. He said, you have been praying to know my will, to know my purpose. You have prayed to know my blueprint. Here he is giving you one. Take it. Hide it in your heart. Spend days seeking me. And what is written in the scroll will be made known to you. 
I see, my dear brother, many little eaglets in the scroll. And when the scroll is unfurled, these eaglets, they will fly out from the scroll. Revelations of understanding. And fill your church. Fill your understanding. Thank you, wonderful God. Thank you, wonderful God. Make yourself known.
When you are done praying, you can just quietly sit on your chest. <coughs> 